this is, see if you can see it. That's oh, a little bit harder to see. It's wine SOS. Wine SOS. Let's rock on over to Craft Cam. I'll show you how this is done. All right. So this is called Wine SOS. I just wanted to show people a different way, <laughs> a different way of actually doing uh, the labels of this. So if you wanted to do a little bit more decoration, then you can put on uh, an actual label. I have this whole label paper, so I just kind of played around with label paper. I have Cliff stencil on some Wine SOS with his cool little stencil. And just because I like to make things look a little bit more stylistic, and he's going to cringe when I do this, but I also want to do um, just the sides with a little bit of Christmas here. So I'm put my little sides there like so, and then I'm going to do the other side as well with my little pink, or sorry, my red stamp that I was using earlier. And that way it's a little bit... I don't know. It's it's just a little bit more, you know. We just have we just have a little bit more uh a little bit more girl in here. A little bit more fun. Not so military. And we're going to put that. This is what this one I actually put on the bottom. We're gonna put that one on the top. What is in here? Oh, oh good. It's my project. Okay. It's heavier than I thought it was. Okay, so like I said, this is label paper. It's a little bit harder to unstick like stickers, but if you have nails like I just cut, it's a lot easier to get it undone. You're going to see me struggle to get this, but you can do that, or you can decorate directly onto the, uh, the box itself. Again, we're using metal, these little metal boxes that are Altoid tins, but without the Altoid embossing. Um, Cliff's little example is somewhere around here. Stick that on there like a Sue. So just like a sticker, like that. Wine SOS, created from a Newman's own organic cinnamon mint. There's no embossing on here, so I didn't have to worry about any Altoids type of embossing, but you can do whatever the heck you want. You can paint over the Altoids embossing, or you can just work with it. Make it look cute. All right, so what is inside of a Wine SOS kit? Well. I couldn't fit a bottle of wine in here, but what I could do is get you ready for a party, so, and organized for a party. So what, you, what we did is, uh, we actually have the Swiss Army knife in here, but you could just do the, uh, the bottle, a regular bottle cork portion. This is the reason why I put the Swiss Army knife in here, because it actually has the bottle corker, the corker, the kilaka. And I put a magnet on the inside, so blam, it sticks right to the magnet. And then, of course, because we don't want to get people all messed up on whose wine is whose or whose martini is whose, I created these very easy recycled wine markers. And they all have little numbers on them, they have alcohol ink on them, and they're good to go. And this is actually, even if you, you know, you don't use anything else, this is a good way to sort of just keep wine markers in their place. I know oh, kind of the hardest thing about wine markers, I love wine markers, by the way, but kind of the hardest thing about wine markers is the fact that that they come on usually a little card and then you inevitably lose the little card and you don't have a little box to put them in so if anything just give them the, give somebody this box with some wine markers in it and they have something cute to do all right so let's show you how I did the wine markers which um this box is a little sticky the box again is covered in some spray paint that we got at the hardware store. You can cover it with whatever you choose. And I, of course, am using my FRS can, which I cut open, I carefully cut open, so I didn't get any snags. I took all the snags off of the sides with my little scissors. I used, usually use my dollar store scissors to do that. And then, of course, what I did is I took one of my punches. This, this is just a regular, Marvy punch. I also have what I love are Fiskars punches. This is like a one inch little round circle here. Round circle, a little redundant. Cut it out like so. I think people usually deserve around eight wine markers. Eight makes a pretty good party, unless you just want to have a party of two. But um, very easy to do. So I just cut that out. A lot of people are afraid to use their 
um, punches on these. If it's a simple punch, like a circle or a square, you're good to go. I don't recommend using squares on 10 because the corners are gonna cut you. But um, I have been using these Fiskars punches on 10 very easily and it hasn't ruined it. In fact, I've heard that it actually sharpens your punches. If you're afraid, don't use it, but if you are bold, then uh, feel free to use that. If not, just cut out, hand cut out your circles and don't leave any frayed edges on them or else they will cut you. But once you have uh, really nice, smooth edges, you don't have to worry about being cut. It's about as thick and as dangerous as a piece of paper, which we all know still can be dangerous. Just a little FYI, all right? Now I'm gonna work on doing my little hand embossing with the help of a thick, nice little thick foam pad here. You can use, if you don't have a little thick foam pad, you can use a book, phone book, whatever you have laying around. And you're gonna need yourself either a ballpoint pen or um, a pencil, which is what I'm gonna be using. I think the number I'm missing tonight is a seven, so I'm going to work on lucky number seven. On the design side, I'm actually doing the embossing here. So I just did seven here. I'm gonna do an eight on this next one here. And if you wanna get really, you know, technical and you want, you want the design to be a specific number, then what you would do is take some alcohol ink or with your Sharpie and you would stamp on your, your actual, you know, design, whatever. Then you would emboss over that. Uh, just so that you can sort of color it in stay within the lines. I like to keep it simple I don't mind my handwriting. It kind of fits with the modern style that we're doing here and to keep it from Kind of bowing because once you press into this it bows up a little bit You're gonna flip it on over and then give the edges Little notches you probably saw me do this last week with my recycled vintage actually the week before last on the cool to craft pajama party with my recycled vintage little ornaments. Same technique, very easy to do, and you can keep these silver if you really want to. Not, not a bad thing to keep these silver. It sort of keeps an industrial, the dudes in your life will like it, or the men in your lives will like it. And it is just, you know, very simple. But if you want to spice it up a little bit, grab some alcohol inks or your Sharpie markers, which are also alcohol inks, I'm going to be using some, ta-da, Adirondack ink uh, from Tim Holtz. Big surprise, right? I know that those of you who know me uh, will not be surprised at the fact that I'm using that. I like to put my alcohol ink directly onto the sponge and or the piece, and you just kind of sponge around there. Nice dark green, pretty green color. Ooh, look at that. Now the eight and the seven aren't gonna show all too much because it sort of blends in with the background, which means I am going to use my Sharpie color marker to go back over my little embossed eight and seven so it pops just a little bit more. I'm gonna be using this kind of orangey red color. And by the way, this Adirondack ink color that I just used is lettuce. And this orange color that I'm using is Maybe it doesn't have a color on it. You would think it would, right? Sunset orange, it's right there in this pretty marker. All right, so this is sunset orange, which kind of has this nice red tone to it. And I'm just gonna go right on over there and right on over there. Some people who have worked with wire have their own method of how they like to make their hooking mechanisms for the stem of wine glasses. I am not a wire maker or a wire worker. I don't, I don't really, you know, I, I like to make things simple. I like to make it so that people who don't have a lot of wire at home or complicated tools can make things. And that's why I made these out of your simple paper clip. Very easy to do. And with a little hot glue, you can get that going really easily. So all I did was I um, just straightened out my paper clip. This is a larger paper clip. It's about an inch and a half long. And I straightened it out like a so. I took just a, a very simple pair of needle nose pliers. I also grabbed my little Sharpie pen back in the picture and I wrapped my piece around 
so it kind of has wings and like it has to go right on over itself so loop it on over itself like so the cool thing about uh, <laughs> these uh, these paper clips is they're easy to use you saw in my bow tie rings that they're very very easy to use and they're you know you're only needing the needle nose pliers because you need to just wrap little tight little loops in this so now you're going to kind of make a heart just bring each end of your piece i'm going to try and do it over the white part so you can see there um bring each end of your piece in towards itself and leave about i don't know about a half an inch um, between here so that you can have room for your stem. Like I said, not a wire worker, so it's not going to be totally beautiful, but I try my best. And if you mess up, don't worry about it. If you do have any other sorts of wire projects, anything like that at home, or any wire at home, you can use a thicker gauged wire for this. I think it'll work out just nicely. Or you can just use your own technique. I'd imagine that if you have a professional wire and tools at home, then you're pretty much good to go, people. All right. So it looks something like so. Now, this is kind of far apart, but you're probably going to want to bring it in a little bit because the mechanism on this is essentially going to hug like that it's going to hug right on there so i'll show you when it's finished i'll show you this number five it just hugs right on there like so and it just sits there and then you just pull it off so it's not going to fall off because you just kind of had to push it right on there like that and it just clips right on so it's perfect all right so then because you have created that and if you need to fold this in a little bit more to create less of a gap in your little heart, then you can do that so that it, it has a little bit more tension when you're putting it on the stem. This is an empty glass, which does not mean that I've been drinking wine tonight. It's just an empty glass that I grabbed from, <laughs> from the, <laughs> the cabinet. I swear I've been drinking, um, but I might be later. <laughs> okay, now all I did is I just took my number. Well, actually, I'm going to take number seven here. Put a little bit of warm glue on the back, just in a nice little circle, like a dime size. Be careful because you are dealing with tin, which does get hot when you put hot glue or warm glue on it. And then, voila, just set it right on there. And then once it's done drying, it's good to go. And then you just throw them all into your wine SOS tin with a cork screw, which now I've remembered the name of and throw in your markers, maybe even a wine bottle stopper with an old synthetic cork. Throw that in there, and I don't wanna put my lucky number seven in there because he's not done drying. And then you just close it on up, and you have a really fun little gift for anybody in your life. All right, let's rock on over to Headcam and show everybody what it looks like a little bit up close. Ta-da! Wine S-O-S for Meyer, Meyer Crafts. Go to andreacurrycrafts.com. You'll see more fun videos, templates, and just creative chaos. We love it.